Uh, welcome to a new video where I want to compare the Xperia 1 Mark 1 against the Xperia 1 Mark 2 and on the front they look almost the same. The only difference you can see is I think the camera module. Anyway, I want to compare them, all, run through all the specs, compare the camera, battery time, screen, speakers and everything that is there to compare. Both are running on the Android 11 update here for the Xperia 1 and here for the Xperia 1 Mark II. So I think it's a fair comparison. So let's get started. Now I'm back in the studio where I can show you the hardware differences. What we can see here on the left is the One Mark One, on the right the One Mark Two, and you can see that the One Mark One is a tiny bit taller than the One Mark Two, and also a tiny bit wider and a tiny bit thicker. So this One Mark Two has a larger capacity battery and therefore is a bit more heavy. On the right side we have the power button with integrated fingerprint reader on the One Mark II and the volume rocker on top. Here we have a separate power button, fingerprint reader and volume rocker. At the bottom edge we have the shutter button. Two shutter buttons, two staged, but the problem with the One Mark I is that it's a bit mushy and this one is a bit more clicky feeling. What you can also see on the first glance is this has a flat edge surface and this is a bit more rounded, just like the Xperia 5 Mark II, for example. On the left side, we basically have nothing on the One Mark I. On the One Mark II, we have the SIM tray, which is capable of either putting a mm, micro SIM and micro SD card. And this tray on the One Mark I, you can found uh, can be found on the top, which has the option not only to have a micro sim card but a second micro sim card so dual sim support or micro sd card so this is pretty nice you can see you can open them up without any issues on the back you see also a nice difference in terms of how the cameras are positioned so you can see that the camera module here is a bit larger also sticking out a lot more from the device itself and we have a triple 12 megapixel setup as well as on the One Mark One triple 12 megapixel setup, but with smaller sensors. The display, let me go back to the desktop. The display is 6.5 inch on both, has the same resolution of 4K, but has a different calibration. You can see this already if I open this up, maybe you can see it a little bit. So to my naked eye, the left one, Xperia 1 Mark 1, has a slightly warm, warmer color to it. Let's go to the settings where I can show you this. Both are running Android 11, by the way. This one has problems with the accelerometer, accelerometer as you can see. It is switching to a landscape position. So let's go to display and go to white balance. Here you can see the various different colors and also differences in terms of setting them up. So you have a set manual option here on the One Mark II which you don't get on the One Mark I. When it comes to the um, white balance I've set both to medium and here you can see that the One Mark I has a slightly warmer uh, color to it. By default both are shipped in the cool color section and here I really have to say yeah, almost identical. I might be slightly bit cooler on the One Mark II and a slightly bit warmer still on the One Mark I. You can also set up a custom one. This is the custom one, very warm one that I have set up here. Here I didn't even play with, but I can set also a warm one, which is even a bit more warm than the one on the left. So which one is the best for you? You can prefer and you can change it in the settings without big issues. Let's go to the specification to, so I can show you a little bit more of this device. As you can see here both 6.5 inch displays, 12 megapixel cameras, 4K display, uh, 6 gigabytes of RAM here on the One Mark I, 8 or 12 gigabytes of RAM depending on the version. Usually this here is the 8 gigabytes of RAM version. The battery 3330 on the Xperia 1 and 4000 on the Xperia 1 Mark II, which is a big difference because this the Xperia 1 Mark II has way better battery life than Xperia 1. Both are running Android 11 nowadays. Um, both got the update. You can see here also the body size difference. 
uh, so two millimeters and another 0.9 millimeter and also a few millimeters in terms of thickness let's compare the sound of the xperia 1 with the xperia 1 mark 2 so let me play back something here hit the record button on my uh, audio recorder and i play it back with the music app And you can hear that it is a bit stretching and scratchy on 100%. The Xperia 1 Mark II has a loudspeaker on the bottom and it is using also the earpiece at the top for playing back. The Xperia 1 Mark II sounds a bit better. Let's check it out. Same music clip. Playback with music. You can hear it is fuller, fuller sound and a bit louder um, and in general I think it has more bass. The Xperia 1 Mark II has a bottom firing speaker here that is um, actually not firing to the bottom but it's firing to the front and on the top it has also the earpiece that's using as a secondary speaker and this produces a very good and a very nice sound with good stereo separation which is a lot better than on the Xperia 1. So what we will do now is starting up some uh, applications to see which of them are a bit quicker. So let's start with iFunny for example. Uh, one, two, three and you can see I think the One Mark II was a bit uh, faster I have to agree here I consent to everything here as well I can say okay United States and there you go so this is I funny let's open up for example what do we have here new pipe one two three and you can see in this case the Xperia 1 Mark 1 was a bit quicker let's see if they're connected to the same Wi-Fi they are not connected to the same Wi-Fi let's connect them to the same Wi-Fi to make it even more yeah on the same level uh, let's open up uh, what do we want to open up let's open up f droid one two three and you can see again one mark two a tiny bit quicker than the one mark one in general usage if, if i've just used the device let's let's open up twitter for example one two three I feel that the One Mark II is a bit quicker than the One Mark I. That is definitely something that you will notice, and especially uh, when it comes to uh, editing video files. For example, the One Mark II has a better speed than the One Mark I. But for day-to-day -day usage, both are very good. So if you're uh, thinking about buying a cheap version of the Xperia 1, uh, or because it is now almost more than a year old, you can get them very cheap very very good uh, price sometimes the the only thing that is uh, speaking against the one mark one is the uh, possibility to plug in headphone jacks and the battery so this is another thing that i can show you uh, on the top we have a headphone jack on the one mark two where this is missing on the one mark one so this is i think one of the uh, issues. The other issue is the fingerprint reader is far superior on the One Mark II than on the One Mark One. Even though you can see here in this case, most of the time, if the fingerprint reader reads my finger nicely on the One Mark One, it is quicker in uh, starting the display. In this case, it didn't work. And this is a problem that you sometimes have. Uh, let's try it again, maybe like this. 
at the same time I can see almost at the same time uh, unlocking the device but trust me the fingerprint reader on the one mark II feels nicer than the fingerprint reader on the one mark one where you have to clean it up a few times uh, and especially if you have a bit wet fingers you will get trouble with this so this is the software we can start reddit one last time to see who is quicker one two three i have to say that the one mark two is quite a bit quicker uh, when it comes to uh, multitasking and and uh, keeping stuff in memory there's almost no difference so six or eight gigabytes of memory makes not much of a difference for day-to-day -day usage but if you have many applications that you're switching be between then of course you will notice this uh, uh, and yeah this might be something that you might be aware of that the eight gigabytes of ram is a bit better but what we want to do now is take a look at the camera at the back we have a one over 1.7 inch size sensor which is a very big sensor almost one inch size sensor a little bit smaller but still and here we have a one over two inch sensor which is definitely smaller and yeah this leads also to more natural bokeh here and yeah more noise here and how do they compare in terms of cameras? Uh, I think I will go outside again and will show you a few camera samples, not only from the main back cam, but also the front facing camera. So let's get started. So we start the camera comparison with the front facing camera of the Sony Xperia 1, Mark 1. And we want to take a look how this compares with the front facing camera module of the Xperia 1 Mark 2 because I think they are very similar. 8 megapixel shooters and both are not very good. At least this is what people tell me. Uh, anyway, this is the front facing camera video test and stabilization is turned on. The best that the Xperia 1 Mark 1 can do is uh, full HD here, 30 frames per second. And this is what you see right now. So now the footage of the Xperia 1 Mark 2 front facing, also 8 megapixels, might be a little bit loud. Uh, this one has also full HD recording only, so no uh, 60 frames per second or um, 4K front facing camera recording. So uh, I'm recording this by the way with my external microphone. But one interesting thing that the Xperia 1 Mark II has is a wind filter for the internal microphones and uh, the other phone, the Xperia 1 Mark I, only has uh, yeah, internal microphones and it doesn't have any uh, kind of uh, wind filter enabled so you can clearly hear the wind noises as well. But I'm using external recording with my uh, Sony uh, ICD UX5. 60 recorder so it is uh, recording the audio externally so you don't have to listen to this uh, internal recording via the smartphone and yeah this is the test it has also stabilization electronic image stabilization enabled so this is what you can expect from the front facing camera of the Xperia 1 Mark II so uh, now we are recording with the Xperia 1 Mark 1 on the back cam 4K actually I will downscale it to full HD but it will still look very good and uh, stabilization is enabled with this one as well 30 frames per second because 60 frames per second is impossible with the Xperia 1 Mark 1 in 4K mode you can only do this in full HD so this is uh, using the full stabilization mode as you can see here this is what the Xperia 1 Mark 1 can offer in terms of quality so and now the recording with Xperia 1 Mark II 4K uh, 30 frames per second because you cannot go up to 60 frames per second at least not in the default camera application and this is what you can expect in terms of quality from the uh, rear facing camera the main camera I only compare here I don't want to compare the ultra wide uh, angles in terms of video you will see some photos where I compare the ultra wide angle cameras as well so uh, yeah this is the Xperia 1 Mark II as main camera video and stabilization let's compare the default camera application this is the Xperia 1 Mark 1 and this is the default camera application what you can see here right now is like I have a dot here where I can switch between the various different camera lenses so two times the zoom 
and super wide angle and I have the option to half press and take a shot you can see there's no focusing indicator here for the super wide angle because there is uh, no auto focusing on the super wide angle it uses a fixed focus I can go to the one times and here you can see you get a focus confirmation and I can take a shot by just pressing so this works pretty nicely and uh, the details are there as you can see here it works pretty nicely when it comes to this and uh, let's get this watch a bit closer to see how far I can go in here and it still focuses so kind of a macro photography possibility and uh, here it just says I'm too close now it says green but it's not really in focus so this is an issue that you sometimes get with the Sony devices it doesn't focus really and now I think it is in focus let's check the image and you can see yes okay we can get pretty close and we can read all this stuff this is pretty nicely in focus when it comes to video mode what I can do in video mode is if I record something in 4k for example I have the option still to go to the two times zoom which is using I think the secondary lens which is pretty nice so I have this option I cannot go to the wide angle so no matter if I'm recording in 4k or uh, 1080p the default camera application on the Xperia 1 Mark II is a bit different but very similar first of all you notice we have now the option to choose between the three different lenses directly so I can go to super wide angle lens I can get like here explanation about uh, correction and uh, a distortion correction and I have a focus indicator which tells me okay this super wide angle lens has auto focusing can I get very close to object this is a macro like capability no it is not and you can see this one also doesn't give me a focus confirmation if there is no focus acquired so now focus is acquired it took a while and this is a super wide angle photo and you can see here yeah, it got it in focus but it's not very sharp it's not as sharp as the last um, photo that I took with Xperia 1 Mark 1 with the main sensor I cannot go too close because it is a very big sensor almost one inch as I said before so I have to go a bit further and I think this should be okay and if I go in here right now you can see it is in focus but only the top part is in focus this one is not in focus so you can see I have the detail here but I have to be careful when it comes to um, the big sensor size that keeps stuff only partially in focus so this I have to keep in mind the big sensor lets in has biggest pixels lets in more light of course and of course I have the possibility to have very quick shots like press and hold on something and uh, it is basically in burst mode then I can enable burst here in this case and um, yeah it's locked on then on, on ice and so on and has auto focusing in burst mode which is pretty nice I can also go into the zoom in mode you can see I cannot focus here uh, cannot require any focus with this one uh, when we go into the video mode one thing that is interesting is here I have the possibility to switch to all modes here again also to the super wide angle lens but if I record nope I don't have any options here if I click on tap it is not going into the um, wide angle lens it is not going into the zoom lens I can manually zoom in but this is a digital zoom only as you can see here but interestingly enough I can get very close to objects here and as you can see here my watch is almost macro like capability that I have here um, but uh, yeah it's a limitation that I cannot switch during recording between the different camera lenses so this is something you have to keep in mind then another thing is of course if you want to take photos you have the photo pro app here uh, that is missing on the Xperia 1 Mark 1 so on the 1 Mark 2 you get the photo pro app you have the ability to use photo pro here and you have the ability to uh, use this uh, as your um, yeah photo camera basically with all the nice features that you might have known from various different um, uh, Sony cameras so I have the possibility you can see here it's showing my focus I can click and I have then a nice sharp shot as you can see here so pretty nicely done I've made some videos about the photo pro app very nice and good 
app. In terms of video app, you have, of course, the Cinema Pro app, which allows us to shoot pretty nice cinema video. And this app is also available on the Xperia 1 Mark II. But what the Xperia 1 Mark II misses out, of course, is the Photo Pro app. So if you want to manually shoot something, you can go to the normal app and then under mode, you have the option to go to manual. And there you have some manual settings, just like on every other common Android phone that has some manual settings. So I can set the shutter speed, the uh, ISO, the EV exposure compensation and the white balance here and even autofocus. But you can see it's a bit different design and uh, yeah, can achieve very good things with this as well in this manual mode. And uh, it's also a lot of fun using it, but the Photo Pro mode is definitely uh, way better than the manual mode of the Sony uh, built-in camera. So this is a little overview of the difference in camera software. This is it basically for the Xperia 1 Mark 1 against the Xperia 1 Mark 2. Which device is the better one? I think I have my favorite a little bit, but you can write down in the comment section what do you think is the better device and which one would you recommend for the price? Because the Xperia 1 Mark 1 is pretty low when it comes to the price region right now and the One Mark II is still a bit high even though the One Mark III is coming out. Uh, and how do you think the improvements from the One Mark I to the One Mark II have been implemented? How big are they? And what do you expect for the One Mark III? Can they step up the game from the One Mark I, One Mark II to the One Mark III again in terms of camera quality and overall yeah, design and maybe device quality. Write it down in the comment section. That's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.